Well, we have Tom Chi, uh, who is a rising star in, in endourology, urology in general, and he is in one of the premier institutions in the world. Thank you so much, Tom, for being here. And I know how hard it is to come here and spend time with us, and your family is in San Francisco, you know. But uh, also, I'd like you to really tell us a little bit about Tom. You know, not the professional Tom, but uh, just Tom. And that's why I invited you to come here. I really appreciate the opportunity. Um, I've heard about the Jackson Hole meeting for years and years yeah. from uh, Dr. Jack McInich, Peter Carroll, Marshall Stoller, and everybody just says it's the, it's the top meeting in the whole country. And so I was very excited to get the invitation, so I appreciate the opportunity to actually come. Uh, so, and I guess, you know, one of the things that uh, was very exciting to me is that I, I grew up on the East Coast of New Jersey, mm -hmm. and uh, we would, we actually skied quite a lot when we were kids, oh. but East Coast skiing is very different from Jackson Hole skiing. I mean, it's either slush or it's freezing, like there's, there's no good condition, right. but you know, we loved it. So it's something that we, uh, as a family, I've got an older sister and a younger brother. Mm -hmm. My parents would just uh, take us there. They'd sit down in the cabin, and they would just say, go out there. <laughs> I don't remember getting lessons or anything. They'd just say, go figure it out. And they'd just sit there all day. So I, looking back on it, I think, I don't even know how they did it. <laughs> but uh, it's something that now we've grown up with. And uh, I've, I've turned over to snowboarding now. But me and my brother and my sister, and we, it's a family uh, activity that we share. We, we love it. So this meeting is, is really kind of tied into that passion for me. Oh, this is awesome. I didn't know that, but talking to you, we have something in common that uh, is Korea. Uh, although you're uh, Chinese uh, descent, I, your dad, right, was born in South Korea? That's right, yeah. He, uh, my dad is ethnically Chinese, right. and their family was from the northern part of China, but uh, during the war and the right. occupation, yeah. their family fled to South Korea. Yeah. And so he was born in Korea, grew up in Korea and then went from to, from there to school in Taiwan wow. and that's where he met his mom uh, he met my mom and uh, they got married right. and moved to New York New Jersey and that's my where I God, grew up. This is uh, it's a small world right and um, uh, you probably uh, want to stay closer to your family and friends and now you're in the uh, on the other side of the country and how long you been in San Francisco now? So I, uh, I went out to undergraduate at Stanford, and uh -huh. so I followed my sister, who was also a Stanford graduate. Wow. And I, in the little town I grew up in, when I'd say to people, oh, I'm going to go to Stanford, and they'd say, oh, you know, I heard Connecticut's very nice this time of year. <laughs> so the, anything kind of outside of Pennsylvania, west of Pennsylvania, just doesn't exist from where I grew up. And uh, so we, we migrated really following my sister, and then my brother moved out too, so he lives in San Francisco. Oh, okay. My sister's in the Bay Area. So now the three of us are there, and we're just trying to pull my parents over. You just have to do that. It that. just makes sense. <laughs> so our, we've really migrated out west. So why endourology? Tell me, because uh, you, what I see and I saw the presentations, you could basically do any kind of uh, subspecial within our subspecialty. That, that's very nice of you. I have, like many people, I think been very fortunate to have great mentors in life. Mm. And I, I'm very lucky to have trained at UCSF where we have just world-renowned faculty mm. who are really top of the game for whatever field they're in. And mm. so We've had great exposure, and during training, I was lucky enough to be able to work with people like Tom Liu and Peter Carroll and Jack McInich. And when I got to the mid part of my training, I spent time with Marshall Stoller, mm. and he's a remarkable human being and just inspiring. And spending time with Marshall, you also, I think spending time with different specialties, you also figure out what personalities you kind of match with and what really sparks your interest. And endourology, I think that as a, as a group, tends to be tinkerers and people who kind of like thinking about things in different ways, and I, that kind of really appealed to me. And so during my residency, I spent a year working in Marshall's lab, and uh, we developed a Drosophila model 
for making a fruit fly have stones, which mm. was at the time kind of first to field, which was terrific. And it was an idea that came from a patient. And after that, it was kind of just following opportunities. Mm -hmm. Great project led to great fellowship, led to a great opportunity to join the faculty. And so it's been, it's been kind of a, a, a really fun journey for me. That's awesome. What do you do then after working a very hard day, now you go home, Probably you have some traffic there. Right? There, there. Well, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. We have terrible traffic in the Bay Area. It's yeah. true. So, what kind of music you listen to, or are you just radio, or what? What do you do while you're driving? And second, I hope you're not texting while you're driving. But uh, second, what, what do you do to relax when you get home? So I fortunately circumvented all the traffic. We, we, we live actually very close to campus, so ah. it's about a mile. So I will either walk in the mornings or drive, uh, ride a bike back in the evening times, which is a really nice way to kind of unwind and rewind during the end of the beginning of the day, uh, which is a great quality of life. Um, the, at home, you know, we have three kids who are three, five, and seven now. And, they're, they're always different and always joyful, and so that's obviously a big source of pleasure. Um, I'd say, you know, recently, so I, I used to do a lot of music, and uh, I had briefly thought about being a choral conductor. That was the only wow. career I, I would have entertained, not medicine. And uh, I, when I went to college, I got a guitar, and I said, oh, I'm, I'm gonna play guitar, it's gonna change my life, it's gonna be terrific. And I carried that guitar with me for 20 years, everywhere we moved and I don't think I played more than a half hour on the whole thing. <laughs> so finally my wife said, you either play that guitar or we're going to throw it away. And so in the last few years I've actually picked up guitar which has been very fun to kind of re-exercise a different part of your brain you hadn't touched in a while in a and new way. And what kind of music do you play then? So I, I thought I would, you know, I'd enjoy kind of folk and I like classic rock and things like that. And uh, my wife uh, got a teacher for me who really was into jazz and finger picking. So wow. that's what I play. So, you know, you just follow good teachers, I guess. Yeah, that's, uh, that's a lot of fun. I love music and playing guitar. This is uh, one of the best things. Um, what do you see in the future now in terms of uh, how you train? Because you just not just, but you finished recently training, and now you're the boss, the attending. And do you think that from your train, training years and how you're gonna train in the future, do you think you, there are a lot of changes that you have to make because of the system that you, we, we have nowadays, or you can continue the same kind of uh, training and education that you had in the past? Yeah, that, that's, a, that's a very interesting and, and kind of loaded question. You know, I, I think that I certainly grew up in an environment where my, my mentors and my role models were really what I think is kind of the trifecta. You know, our, our, our department and our school's mission really is to excel in teaching, mm -hmm. research, and uh, clinical activity. And there, there are three very much competing missions. And you wish there were 27 hours in every day. And you have to kind of figure out how to balance those things. So certainly, I, I've been working in each of those three components. And I, I envision myself um, as I am moving forward, trying to keep those three missions going full tilt. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I tend to like to be busy. And I think that you know without without being really involved in patient care. It's hard to come up with uh, good ideas and good mm -hmm. questions. And I think without being able to be involved in the research and the teaching, it's hard to stay motivated. And I, I love the fact that residents push you and uh, the research pushes you to think in different ways. Mm -hmm. So I, I certainly think that to me that, that is still the, the model in which I, I see myself moving forward. Mm -hmm. I think that where I where I sometimes think a lot about is how to how to sustain that I think in the face of growing clinical pressures. You know, I think that everybody faces it everywhere as um, academic medical centers and non-academic medical centers kind of grow bigger, and there is a bigger push for productivity, and it's a lot more easy to create an objective measure for clinical care 
And how do you sustain those research and teaching missions in that face, I think is going to be a big challenge for us as an academic community, not just in urology, but you know, across the board. Absolutely. And so I, I, I don't know the answer. That's a very difficult question. It's certainly mm -hmm. something that I think a lot about. And to finalize this session, uh, what kind of food do you like? Because <laughs> I think you are a foodie, correct or not? I, I have uh, stopped saying I'm a foodie because now I've met some true foodies and they, yeah. they put me to shame with their yeah. knowledge <laughs> and their, their abilities. Uh, I do enjoy food though. We're lucky to live in San Francisco to have a lot of variety, oh, yes. that's for sure. Yes, that's for sure. And I, I think that the, the restaurants that I've enjoyed the most are restaurants that um, provide an experience to. Uh, there are some restaurants where I think that the people who, regardless of the food, they think about how they're going to interact with you during the course of your meal. And that, oh, that's always wow. interesting. That's awesome. Well, Tom, thank you so much. I have no words to really enough to thank you for being here. Um, I am pretty sure we're going to be very tight, close, and uh, we'll be talking a lot in the future. And we're going to have you soon as a critique panelist since you were a speaker. So. Uh, I hope you can come back. It's a real pleasure to be here. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.